to make this more accessible for everybody. Thank you all for joining us. We'll get started now. I'm Allison Manley. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Canopy Studios. And today we're hosting a webinar about reorganizing your navigation for success. Canopy designs, builds, and supports websites for clients that want to make a positive impact. And our uh, host today is Jess Skews. She is our Director of Experience, which means that she leads multidisciplinary teams to ensure that the strategy and goals are implemented for every client at Canopy. Jess is active in the crafting of user-first experiences from initial discovery through the strategy, UX, creative, and technical development life cycles to create sites that delight all of the users. A reminder that there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen as well. So if any time during the presentation you have a question for Jess about, about it, please enter it there. And then when she's done her presentation, we will go through all the questions at once. Uh, and from here, I'm going to mute and stop my video and hand it over to Jess Skews. Hi, everyone. It's great to meet you. Um, I've had the pleasure of working on several UCSF sites in the past. Uh, most recently, I've been working on incremental updates for the nursing site um, and some updates and some nice engagement functions for the urology site. So very glad to meet everyone. Thank you. I know that everyone's very busy. So thank you for spending some time with us today. Um, as Allison mentioned, we're going to be discussing some tools and an approach um, to help you all reorganize your navigation for success whenever you feel or see from data that you need to do, make some, some adjustments there. So again, um, this is a, a bit about me. Um, you can certainly look at connecting with me on LinkedIn through the QR code. Always feel free to email, um, and our, of course, the Canopy site's down there as well. So this is actually uh, the last part of a series that we've been doing for, um, for the winter season, and this is the last one. You can see here the previous ones that were done, the dates they were done, and then the link here will give you um, the actual videos of those. So please go back and look at those really important and relevant topics as well. So today our agenda is going to be discussing uh, how we define success and that's a baseline that we want to definitely um, understand about your website so that um, we know exactly what's happening today and gives us a benchmark for whatever changes are going to be made. Um, and so we, we're going to talk about metrics. The second item there is knowing your audience. Want to make sure that you understand who you're speaking to and how best to speak to them and how they're currently behaving within your website experience. The third one there is nomenclature or how will we label things? What's the best practice around there and some tips and tricks around um, naming language and labels. The, la the fourth one there is search engine optimization. Of course, it's always very important to understand from an SEO perspective, the changes you're making and how search engines will respond to those changes. A couple of best practices, um, just kind of food for thought and tips and tricks there. And then as Allison mentioned, we'll do a Q&A session. So we'll dive in here. So UX Design World had a really nice quote that we thought we would open up with. The link is there if you wanna check out the whole article, but here we are just kind of emphasizing one of their quotes talking about every click or interaction should take the user closer to their goal while eliminating as much of the non-destination as possible. So remember back in the day when websites first came out and in the infancy of building websites, everybody thought, well, let's just give them everything. Um, so you see web pages from a long time ago, and you probably remember this, where every link, every pathway to every piece of content was just listed on the home page. Um, and here's an example from Yahoo, uh, where it's just everything. And at Canopy, 
we really um, strive and, and talk a lot about if everything is important, then nothing's important. Um, and so as we work through um, different ways of, of reorganizing navigation, we wanna make sure that we choose the right ones, the right categories and groupings so that we don't end up with an overwhelming experience like, like this screenshot you see. So of course with Yahoo, uh, search is very important. So they have this very, now they have this very prominent search bar. Um, on the far right, they have some key actions that they want their audience to take. And then below it, they've now understood what categories are important. And instead of just listing every link um, on the secondary tertiary um, level, we've actually seen now groupings and they're logical. And they've done that through the course of time, of course, um, understanding what's popular and what nomenclature makes the most sense. So this is kind of an, an example of how we used to see web pages and how now we see them all the time. So the first thing that we want to do um, is look at data. And there's a couple of tools that we typically use um, as, we, as we kind of gather data and grab it so that we can have a good way of measuring success later. So one of those tools is heat maps. And we'll show you an example here in a moment. And these heat maps can be really powerful in showing you what's popular today, where people are clicking and things like that. Analytics, of course, is a great way um, and a free way with Google Analytics in order to look at behavior and, and grab the, the numbers and the metrics um, that are important to you. And it's always important to understand um, SERP, which is search engine results page, and the breadcrumbing that happens when someone does enter a search and you're able to see the actual URL structure of all the different pages on the site. So heat maps. Um, this is an example from Hotjar. This is a tool that we use quite often. And you'll see here on the right, um, the areas that are more red, orange, yellow, those are way more popular um, for the users on this website. And this is where they're clicking, um, where they're hovering. And then you'll see some of the cooler colors, blues and whatnot. And this kind of indicates that maybe they're trying to click there, they're hovering their mouse there. Um, so this can give you a lot of information about how folks are intending to use the website. But it's really important at this stage I typically will jump into tactical um, solutions and say, okay, well then this fourth link is something that I should maybe move to the first um, spot. And, and that's good to start kind of coming up with some ideas there, but try to just be a researcher at this point, gather your numbers and understand that those third and fourth links, you know, how many clicks are those getting um, and just kind of gather information at this point. The other piece here is analytics. So there's several ways to use your analytics um, program. And um, one of them is event tracking. Event tracking is really helpful for uh, actions that you want someone to take, that you wanna track, that are not necessarily just going to a certain page. So an example would be a PDF download. You may wanna add event tracking to something like that. So you can see how many times that actual PDF is being downloaded. There's also goal tracking within analytics. So once you kind of understand the orientation of the pathways that you want users to take, you can go create a goal for that. And then it'll just ask you for a couple of URL and that pattern is something they will then track for you. So could be as short as going to the homepage, going to this page, and then um, ending up on the thank you page of a form. And that just helps you to quickly see the goals that are, that are being met. Another really good piece of information from your Google Analytics that I find most people don't know about is tracking your insight search. And this is really, really useful um, because what it does is it will collect all the keyword terms and phrases that your audience will be inputting into your insight search. And what that will do is give you a lot of information around what folks are, folks are, how they speak about your services, um, how popular particular terms are that maybe you weren't 
um, aware of before. Um, it also can be a really good content generator. So if you see that someone's searching a lot for a particular keyword, but you don't have a lot of information on it, then you can look at your content calendar and add that to your content calendar to, to help give your audience what they're looking for within your site. So a lot of good tools within that platform. Um, the search engine result pages, the breadcrumbs here, uh, if your URL is set up correctly, um, you can see in that first um, view on the right that we can see the breadcrumbs of the individual re uh, results that you're searching for. So we'll talk about how to make sure that your URL structure is set up correctly in order to do this. But the, the end result there is that you're going to gain more real estate on these pages if you have the right um, URL structure and it'll give you more um, ability to connect with your audience. Okay, so the second step here is knowing your audience, which is very important. And I know we all know this. And so there's some important things and ways that you can understand your users. Understanding why your users are, are on your site and what they are trying to accomplish are the two first steps to creating an effective user journey. Ensure that you understand your definition of success as well as theirs in each phase of, your, of their journey with your brand. So of course, we have several steps within our journey. We have awareness, we have consideration or evaluation, and it's, un, it's important to understand what your audience is feeling and wants to get out of that stage with you, as well as how you will respond to their needs within each of those steps. So these, uh, we're gonna kind of repeat some of the tools we've already used, but this is gonna be um, also in the researcher phase, but it's gonna start to give you, um, glean some insights for you. So within analytics, you obviously can see where users are coming into your site by which mechanism, whether that's paid, organic, referrals, um, all those sorts of things. But you can also see where geographically they're coming from you can see if they're mostly on mobile or desktop, you can see even you know, what OS they're on. Um, so you can get, gain a lot of information here. Um, another thing to note, if you have your demographics turned on, it's something you have to physically go in and, and, and check um, to turn on, but that will also give you gender and all sorts of things that, that they collect. Um, age ranges is really important because everyone at different age ranges will, will use sites differently. The heat maps and the surveys, again, we showed that heat map tool. That's very important. It'll give you a lot of information. We also tend to also put a on-page survey onto sites that we're going to redesign or make modifications to. And that can be done through Hotjar very, with a very simple poll and that can give you a lot of good information about what folks are looking for, if they were able to find it, or if, again, another content generator, if you just ask what else would you expecting to see or what did you wanna see from this website? And then user testing, we always, always advocate for you to test with your users and Optimal Workshop has a tree jack tool, which is uh, basically you inputting different categories and leveling of your navigation into a tool that then gets sent out and folks are then looking to find certain things based on the use cases that you provide and it'll give a lot of information to you about what's easy to find where you know if um, you ask them to find something and it's in a completely different place than you thought you might put it so that's really important as user testing um, in any case when you're making changes to your website. So let's see here. Uh, when you are doing user testing and when you're asking for feedback from your audience, um, just remember that you will get a lot of praise likely, um, but what we're looking for is the criticism and where there are challenges or hurdles that folks are faced with and that's what you want to solve for so um, go in there with a, a good attitude and, and understand that you might get some good comments but you might get 
not so many good comments and, and it's actually good because that's what then you can fix. So nomenclature. So here's a couple of examples. And um, when you talk about nomenclature, there's a marketing aspect to it as well. So for example, in, in here, we talk about customers versus passengers and passengers may sound a bit more sophisticated or um, you know, less transactional than a customer. And another example, a consumer versus being in the Advantage Club. Um, so there's different ways, of course, that you can label things um, that will have an impact on the way that your users feel about themselves while interacting with you. And um, we'll give you a couple tips here for some more effective naming tools. And you've already gotten um, number four. And it's actually happy incident that number four is there because it's very important around just listening to your users. But we'll start with number one. So summarize long titles to remain on topic. Um, if you have categories that are several lines long or even two, you can lose interest and it might be difficult for folks to understand what you are labeling something. So try and be concise. Um, along with this, which is not mentioned on here, but another good um, tip is understand when you should use jargon and when you shouldn't. Um, if you're looking to bring in an audience that is not yet familiar with the jargon of your website, you know, maybe those top level labelings are not as jargon filled as maybe more technical or product or just deeper information. And along those lines, also acronyms can be difficult. So remember to just when you're using jargon and acronyms when it's appropriate. Removing articles. And this is not referring to content articles, but more grammatically. So we don't need the the, a, or an necessarily. Just remove those just to make it easier to consume for your audience. And then again, A-B test. Um, testing with your audience is very important. So um, you can look at changing one label um, on your navigation or anywhere and see how that, that works comparative to the, the way that it was working previously. And then again, four, just listen. Listen to your audience um, when they speak about your content. So again, with that on-site survey, you may learn a lot. Um, when you're talking with current students or pers prospective students or alumni, just do a lot of listening. Um, sometimes things will be labeled and named one thing very popularly, and then in a year or two, it might actually change. So make sure that you're always kind of reaching out to your audience for feedback. From SEO perspective, there's four things here to note. As I mentioned earlier, the URL path is really important. Um, so you wanna make sure that your navigation and your URL pathing structure match. And I'll show you an example in a moment. Um, breadcrumbs, um, they also need to accurately reflect your navigation structure. And that not only creates clarity for your audience and allows them to navigate in another way within your website and understand where they've been. But also you know, search engines love this because they actually understand the structure of your site much easier. Sitemaps, we all know what sitemaps are. There's actually two versions. One that is HTML that's put on your site and usually it's in the footer. Um, this can help your audience also. Some folks will go straight to the sitemap so they can understand all the pages within your site. Um, but also there's an XML one and that's really helpful for search engines. Uh, once you create that XML sitemap, you'll wanna submit it to the major search engines and that will more, uh, that'll just expedite them crawling the site because they now um, A, know that it's changed, but also B, you've given them a good format to be able to crawl. And the last, um, just talking about um, JavaScript is not something that is easy necessarily to crawl for search engines. So just be mindful about the way that things are built. Um, and also for mobile users, um, again, just making sure that we um, really understand how it's built so that folks that turn off um, JavaScript, which a lot of people will do, especially on mobile, 
um, that they can still navigate easily. So here's an example. Um, this is from UCSF Pathology, an example around our main navigation and then our breadcrumb. So you can see that on this page, we're actually two levels deeper than the main uh, menu, which is training. And um, this breadcrumb gives the user that information. And it's especially important because we know that if you're coming from a search engine, not all the time will you be coming and landing on the homepage. It's typically deeper information that has more content on it that, that search engines will give more authority to and list higher. So the breadcrumb is really helpful for that user at that point. Here's another example from pathology where you can see that not only are you getting now listed for the third page in at, reg at residency, but the right underneath it is the fourth page, which is application. So again, giving you more real estate based on having that right structure. Within Drupal, um, there's actually a way for you to kind of fake um, a URL path. So if there is a particular article or piece of content that you want to have listed in the structure and the back end and um, in the breadcrumb as being under a blog, you can actually help um, help the breadcrumbs out and the structure out by actually giving it an alias of blog slash and then your blog title on the page of the blog title, if that makes sense. So on the actual end page, you can go in there, add an alias to be underneath blog, and that will then help out. So some best practices. Um, it's also important to know um, that, of course, Hover doesn't work on phones. Um, so what we op, uh, usually opt to do is if we're gonna use Hover, we do that on desktop and then it'll be a click on, on the mobile menu. Um, close buttons should always be something that is available to the user to be able to um, allow them to close the window and kind of um, control uh, what they're doing there. The third level here on the, um, sorry, third level, uh, if it's required is expandable. So it's important to understand on mobile and on desktop how many layers you really need to show. And um, these kind of, there's different ways. There's sometimes a plus sign, there's sometimes an arrow, but these kind of visual signs help the user to know that they can expand to see more. Um, and then another really nice thing for a user is that when you have an external link that you actually visually indicate that. And a lot of times it's, this um, visual here with the little arrow going out to indicate that you're actually going to go to another page. And that's helpful so that users won't get lost. Um, and of course, another best practice with external links is that it's always opens in a new window. And that's something that you can indicate within your, your um, content management system that when you have an external link, check it so that it'll open up in a new window. Um, and that helps the user out as well. So here we're talking about, um, again, an icon, a visual sign so that folks know that they can, they'll want to click something in order to find additional levels of navigation. So here it's the arrow. Um, this is actually a page I helped to redesign a bit. Um, it's the third level of navigation within this um, structure is actually on page. And this is a common, especially to help to not overwhelm folks with a very large second, third level navigation. Here, we have a two level navigation in the main menu. Once you get to this residency program, then all of the third level pages are in these tiles that give some more information. And then once they click through, they'll be able to easily go back through the breadcrumb. Um, but it's just really helpful because we're not, again, overwhelming them with too many options at the main navigation and letting them explore their journey at a pace that makes um, a little bit more logical sense. Oh my, that went quick, already to questions. Yes. Okay. 
Great, thanks, Jess. Um, I had some questions. If anyone else has any questions, please add them in the Q and A um, while I ask the one question that I have, which is: So, is there a limit? I'm sure there is. What's the magic limit on how many items you should have in your navigation? Yeah, there was. There's always for years now. There's been a, a term called the the rule of seven. So try not to have more than seven in your main menu. Um, but, you know, really anything less than seven is, is acceptable, but I would really challenge us to get on the lower level of the of four maybe or so. And that just takes a lot of time when you when you really start to get down into categorizing the less choices initially for a user, a lot of times it's the better. And um, so really challenge yourself in, in what can be categorized in the main menu and then what can just exist in the footer, like careers a lot of times can be just existed in the footer versus in the main nav, so. Okay, sorry, I've got noise going on in the background. There's a big truck driving by, sorry if everyone can hear that. And I have a cat who's being very insistent on uh, sharing my keyboard right now. <laughs> um, are, do you have thoughts on when it comes to desktop, having everything condensed in a hamburger menu versus having everything out in the open? I, I'm a big proponent of, of leaving things open on desktop. They are usually audiences in a researching mode and I don't feel like hiding it is helpful. Um, that is the same answer for your search bar. Um, we do tend to a lot of times we'll be like, just give the search icon and say, let's just hide it. If you have the real estate, I, I don't see the point necessarily in hiding even just the action of them searching. Searching is so important. And I'll give you a quick stat. I know that we're almost at time, but um, in it's about eight, I believe it's 84% of folks that search will convert, um, which is really interesting. But an even more interesting stat is I think it's the low 90s percent that um, will folks will just go onto your site and immediately search. So search is really important these days. Okay. Does and with one minute left, does anyone else have a question? <laughs> All right. Well, that's we're at time. Perfect timing. We will send out a recording of this and the deck of the webinar tomorrow if you would like to share this with others. As a reminder, of course, if uh, you need help with your website, Canopy is here to help. Just send us an email at hello at canopy.com. And that is the end. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Next week is February. It's hard to believe. <laughs> so have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.